Okay, my friends, here it is. The video that is going to explain to you exactly what seeds you can plant with a month or even five or even six weeks before your last frost date. Because a lot of people are under the misconception that you have to wait until your last frost date before you can plant anything. So in this video, I'm going to show you uh, about 20 crops that you can direct sow into the garden right now. A month or five or six weeks before your last frost date. No problem. Okay, so listen up. And then at the end, I'm going to give you some special advice about the potatoes. Okay, first on the list are two crops that we want to, to direct sow as early as possible, okay? And that's going to be the peas, our number one, because peas will thrive in the cooler uh, uh, conditions of the early spring and, or of the spring and the early summer. But as soon as midsummer comes around, middle of June and July, and the real heat comes in, peas stop producing. That is what a lot of people uh, fall into that trap, is that they plant their peas too late and then they wonder why they're not really producing or why they get bitter and they're not sweet because they need that cool weather. So we plant them right now, about five weeks, give or take, before the last frost date. And uh, then we're going to plant them again midsummer for a fall harvest. So get the peas in the ground, guys. Uh, next thing is the cabbages. Uh, real cabbage and also the Chinese cabbage. They are going to thrive in the cooler weather. So if you plant a faster uh, growing variety like this Chinese cabbage or the Gloria of Einkusen cabbage, these are going to head up and be really nice uh, by early, early summer. Okay, so we can, we can direct sow these now. Uh, also, we could start these indoors now. It, it's, it's best, any of these leafy greens that you see, it's going to be best to go ahead and start them up indoors if you can, if you have the facilities, even just for a week or two, just till you see them sprout up and they, they get their first set of true leaves. Then put them outside. It gives them a bit of a head start. Uh, but likewise, you can just direct sow all of this right now, no problem. And they will just sit there in the soil until the conditions are right for them to sprout. Uh, next on this list is going to be the collard greens and the collard greens can take super cold or heat it doesn't really even matter so get them in the ground now and they are going to be yielding by early summertime late spring even you're going to be having a boatload of collard greens super nourishing uh, and delicious next thing is going to be the beets now you can direct sow the beets right now and they are going to uh, sprout and be totally fine with a little bit of frost is okay but uh, what I like to do with the beets is that I like to plant them actually one, two, three, within an inch of each other, okay? And when you plant them this way, three seeds within an inch of each other. And when you plant them this way, they are going to grow and they are going to uh, push each other apart. So long as you don't do more than three seeds, they will push each other apart. And so where you would just have one beet, you can have three of them uh, growing that way. And I get big time yields out of a small space planting beets that way, guys. Next thing is going to be carrots. Carrots right now, they can be tricky, okay? But go ahead and plant them right now. They prefer the cool as opposed to the blazing hot, all right? Uh, it really helps carrot germination. If once you sow them, you put a board over them for a few days up to a week until you can uh, see them germinate. Keeps them uh, sheltered from the wind and all of that and from heavy rains because they're super delicate. Next on the list is going to be one of my favorite things. Guys, plant the Vulcan Swiss chard, okay? Because even if you're not in so much to the chard taste, although you should be because it's a wonderful spinach-like taste that doesn't bolt during the heat, that's the beauty of Swiss chard, the Vulcan Swiss chard could be an ornamental by itself. And so I have a couple, you only need a couple plants. And so you plant it and the thing grows a stalk on it this thick by, because uh, it's in the beet family. So it grows a thick beet light -like stalk. Uh, by midsummer and it's just huge I have people come over and they're like what plant is that it looks like rhubarb and they're like wow it, that looks Jurassic that plant looks Jurassic that is the word that they use when they see the Swiss chard the Vulcan Swiss chard so go ahead and get planting it it's a wonderful spinach substitute because it doesn't bolt in the heat spinach as soon as it gets a little bit too hot a little bit too cold oh uh, no we spinach bolts Swiss chard don't bolt now depending on what your season is like I'm going to say hold off on the Brussels sprouts. We want to actually plant the Brussels sprouts midsummer so that they ripen as the uh, frosts are coming in because the Brussels sprouts love to be kissed by a couple of frost uh, before so that they can sweeten up. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and say resist spring sowing Brussels sprouts. Unless you just have a very short season, you better get them in. 
Next thing you can direct sow is the celery, guys. Celery is an awesome thing to be growing and super easy to grow. I recommend starting it up indoors uh, for a few weeks just till it sprouts at least, but I've direct sowed it multiple times and it works. It needs a mellow soil though. So you have to really rake it out and it has to be real nice and soft and flat because the seeds and the sprouts are super tiny. I mean, just they're like a human hair at first. They're just really, really tiny blowing in the wind almost. Uh, so they're really delicate, but you can do it totally. And uh, once they're established, though they're very hardy and uh, they work awesome I juice these all summer long lots of celery and the celery that you're growing yourself is light years beyond anything from the store is in terms of flavor because it's grown in nutrient-rich soil that's bursting with life and so it has everything it needs to develop a full delicious flavor Next thing is gonna be mustard greens, guys. This works really good for kimchi. Also, you can just saute them and it has a delicious flavor. Raw salads, all of that kind of stuff. And they're very cold hardy. Now, with this, I wanna say you can plant pretty much any of the greens right now. Any of the Chinese greens, like shijimishi, I think that's how you say it, spinach, uh, bok choy, uh, uh, pak choy, all that kind of stuff can be planted now and should be planted now because they don't like the heat. Next thing, you can direct sow the cilantro right now, guys. Cilantro loves cool weather, but I wanna show you something. You can direct sow them right now, but here, look at the ones that we winter sowed in our winter jugs. Do you see in there? Actually, I'll open it for you. Okay, so we planted some cilantro outside in the ground at the same time. It hasn't even sprouted yet, guys, but yet we winter sowed it and we left these outside the whole time and look, it is nice and healthy and vibrant. And I'm gonna make a uh, short or a reel and post it to the Instagram account that um, shows you guys exactly how to plant this, okay? But look, weeks before what we did in the ground. Although you can direct sow it now, winter sowing's the way to go for things like this. Also, go ahead and plant the green onion seeds right now and harden off your regular onions and go ahead and plant them outside anytime right now. Next thing's gonna be a couple of oddballs. So the parsley, guys, go ahead and get the parsley started. Like this uh, celery, it's wonderful for juicing, okay? We can make delicious V8 type juices with tomatoes and celery and cucumbers and carrots and uh, um, all kinds of good stuff. Lovage, guys, lovage is like a celery uh, in the flavoring, but it gets really tall and you can plant it now. It's a perennial, it just keeps coming back. Uh, so if you like the celery flavor in your soups and stews, this is a perennial type of celery that works really well. Very intensely flavored. You can direct sow it now. Also the echinacea, guys, because it's a wildflower, you can go ahead and direct sow it at any time, really. Uh, although it usually only grows vegetatively its first year and will flower its second year. So uh, go ahead and plant the echinacea. But likewise, you can plant pretty much any of the wildflowers, like the native wildflowers right now. Like a coreopsis, you can sprinkle these out right now and they will just sprout when the time is right. Okay, so you can go ahead and plant all that stuff right now. Another one I'm gonna say is the calendula, guys. Put this stuff out all over the, I love calendula, also called the pot marigold. Um, you can plant these anywhere. Plant them along the sides of your grow bags uh, so that they can grow up and they'll shade out the grow bags from the intense sun and it works really well. You can direct sow these. Also, you can direct sow the fennel. Guys, the fennel just keeps coming back. I cut it down and every year it gets like six or seven feet tall, bursting with blooms, attracts thousands and thousands of pollinators every day. You can see a swarm of activity happening around the fennel. So you can get that in the ground now. Okay, so that's a pretty good list for right now, but things you, now here's some things you do not want to direct sow, okay? Nasturtiums, if they get hit by the slightest frost, they're dead. Watermelon, any of the watermelons, any of the squash, any of that stuff, if it gets the slightest frost, it's dead. Uh, bush beans, pole beans as well, do not be planting those right now because the slightest little frost, they're dead. Same with corn, same with cucumbers, same with tomatoes and peppers, okay? Do not be planting that stuff right now. So as promised, here's a little bit of advice about the potatoes. So here's a German butter ball, and I am just now chitting it. So you wanna place it now into the uh, sunniest spot you can. Or if you have some grow lights, go ahead and put it underneath that. By grow lights, I mean the shop lights, as you've seen in my other videos. But you wanna put them into intense sun for a couple of weeks, and then they're gonna chit real good. And then we will plant it out about two to three weeks at most before the last frost because if the potato sprouts and it grows, the foliage, if it gets hit by a frost, it will die back. The tuber will probably not die unless it deep freezes, but the foliage will die and it will set you way back. So only be planting potatoes two to three weeks before the last frost, okay? 
So that's pretty much it, my friends. Hopefully this answered the questions I've been getting from you guys. Give the video a thumbs up if you feel like you gained something. Consider subscribing to the channel if you want to see more. Uh, check out the Garden Like a Viking Instagram account for all kinds of daily tips and tricks. I put them in the stories and stuff like that. That I'm of little things I'm doing outside. I don't want to make a full video of. So I will see you next time, my friends.